Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central. We're coming to you with another Lightboard lesson, and today we're doing a post of the week. And this is where we take some questions and answers out of our forums, and we highlight those for you. Today is kind of a culmination of several different questions that have been asked about uh, upgrades. And so we're going to talk about how do you upgrade and what are some things to think about in an upgrade. So I'm going to put uh, a couple of different things, maybe pre-upgrade over here, and then the actual upgrade action itself over here. So a few things to think about pre-upgrade are um, open a proactive case or a proactive support uh, request with our, uh, with our support um, section. And so that way they'll know, hey, you're about to, uh, you're about to upgrade and you, well, you, know, if you may be calling us in a couple of days or whatever, but that way they're kind of on hot standby as it were. So you can open a proactive uh, support or service request. Uh, the other thing is uh, read, read the notes. Read the release notes, read the manual, read all the stuff that, that uh, applies to your current version and the version that you're going to. And by the way, if you, ever, if you skip a version, let's say you're going from like 11 to say 13, then you want to, you want to read the notes on 12 as well uh, because you know, there's features and functionality along the way and so you need to know what you're, either what you're moving to or what you may be skipping or what you may be picking up as a result of a skip over a current version. And then also, I'm going to put licensing up here, license. Uh, and by that, I mean you need to check and make sure your license is active, that it's working properly, so you've gone through the whole you know, dossier and, and activate and just all that stuff. Make sure that's working uh, before you flip and say, and then you certainly don't want to figure out, hey, I, my license doesn't work after I've upgraded and tried to flip on the, the new version. Um, another thing that I'm going to put here is iHealth. And iHealth has a really cool feature uh, where you can open an upgrade, it's called an upgrade advisor. So you can take your current version, you can take a quick view of that, upload it to iHealth, and then iHealth will say, hey, okay, here's all your settings today, and, and then it'll say, what version are you going to go to? And so you can click on the little drop-down menu, I'm going to this version, so then they will tell you, all right, hey, here's some things you need to think about, here's some functionality that you're gonna, you know, that you're going to achieve with the new version. And so that's a really cool thing uh, to, uh, to be able to take advantage of as well. Um, before you upgrade as well, I'll put, I'll put UCS uh, backup. So before you, before you actually do the, uh, the upgrade, you want to take a snapshot of your current version, maybe do a UCS backup, maybe even save that off box just to be completely safe, just in case something crazy happens. Uh, but that way you've got a, a backup, a snapshot of, of where you are today. Um, so once you've got the snapshot, the backup of where you are today and how things are working, now it's time to actually upgrade. So I'll put upgrade over here, upgrade. And then whenever you do the upgrade, you can upload all the bits, all the files and all that stuff, um, even before you, you activate it. So, so you want to upload everything, of course, upload. And then you want to, um, uh, you want to fail over to the uh, to the to the what would be the standby at that point fail over to that uh, that big IP um, and then once you failed over and once everything's on that on that now active version with the with the new upgraded version then you want to compare um, you know efficiency and throughput and just all the different things that that you would uh, care about uh, compare that to to where you were back here with your baseline and kind of your um, uh, you know your 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 well your baseline from your old version. Um, some people want to let that run for uh, you know, maybe just a few minutes and make sure everything's fine. Some people may let it run for a couple of days. Um, but nonetheless, you want to fail it over, and then, uh, and then you would have already uploaded to all the other ones, as, uh, all the others, say, standby, backup um, at that point as well. Then you, then you would have the capability to activate all of those new licenses also. So once that's working, uh, then, then now you're, you know, now you're good and you're happy that everything's working properly. A couple of quick things that I'll put as well is I'll, I'm going to put default here, and just keep in mind, de default, goodness, au, <laughs> can't spell default. Anyway, your default profile on say uh, maybe your cipher list on an SSL profile or uh, local traffic policies, or that kind of thing. Any kind of default. Um, that is there on a current version, you want to make sure that, that you uh, know where you have that in place and understand that the default is going to change as versions change. So you need to just be aware of that. Uh, so check those as well. 
um, things like I rules and just all the other functionalities. Well, you want to you want to go through a little checklist to make sure that uh, that everything's working properly. There's a there's a user I want to give a shout out to JTI on Dev Central actually uh, posted a seven part checklist um, that you can go through and it's out there on CodeShare. We'll link to it and uh, and he it's a great checklist to kind of go through to to make sure that you upgrade properly and and everything's working good. So. Uh, a few things to keep in mind as you upgrade your big IP, take advantage of those new great features, uh, but also keep these things in mind. So thanks for, uh, thanks for watching this Lightboard lesson video with us today, and we'll see you guys out there in the community.